Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, December 18th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Washington, D.C. Now, I always encourage you to send us malware samples or whatever you sort of see being odd in your network. We have one of our readers, Jason, actually followed my advice and not only sent us the malicious document, but also his rather complete analysis. So Didier wrote it up. And now one interesting little twist on this was this was one of these documents that arrives as an encrypted zip file. Now, of course, uh, the password is usually mentioned in the email, but the email by the time that Jason got a hold of this particular zip file was no longer available. So he actually had to use a little tool. He used fcrackzip and uh, this particular tool takes a password list and now of course these encrypted zip files that usually see as email attachments well uh, they tend to have simple passwords so wasn't really all that terribly difficult to find it here using one of the standard password lists so thanks again jason for sending us this file in your analysis and for more details as usual refer to the diary not just earlier today in class, uh, we were talking about covert channels, and so it fits uh, quite nicely that Trent Micro has a blog post about an interesting covert channels via malicious memes that they discovered for a particular piece of malware. This malware is watching a particular Twitter account and waiting for images to be posted with a particular URL patterns. It will then download the image and search the image for a command. Now, if I interpret the code right that Trend Micro posted, then really it's just literally looking for the string within the image data. So this does not appear to be the kind of steganography where you make sort of subtle adjustments to the image, but really more where you essentially leave an exif comment within the image that's really just a string. So that makes it rather trivial to extract the particular string from the image. The yeah, reverse analysis of the malware trend micro did discover a couple different commands that could be executed via the image. One, and that's the one they observed in the wild, was print, which will take a screen capture and exfiltrate it, but it also make it a list of processes capture clipboard content or retrieve usernames or file names from the particular system. Of course, the trick here is that typically connections to Twitter wouldn't necessarily be considered malicious and may fly below the radar. Now, as far as other parts of the malware go, they aren't really done that well. For example, for the command control channel where then some of the content is being uploaded to, there is a static paste bin URL that's being then used in order to retrieve the actual URL of the command and control server. So how would you detect something like this? Well, uh, you probably wouldn't notice the hits to Twitter or the downloading of the image. Also, likely it's difficult to actually come up with a good signature for the image but what you may notice is then the upload of the information to this command and control server advertised via pastebin. And Palo Alto's Unit 42 has a write-up about a recently discovered version of the Shamoon malware. Now, Shamoon has become known a couple years ago, in particular in targeted attacks against the oil and gas industry. And then again, it appears it's targeting these particular industries. What's sort of bad about Shamoon is that it is a wiper. So the only really purpose it has is to cripple the system it's running on, it's erasing hard drive, and even has an option to encrypt the master boot record, which apparently wasn't used in this particular wave of attacks. Now, if you wonder about how to detect uh, these particular infections, and that's sort of why I actually mention uh, this particular attack, well, uh, this version of Shamoon uses the same artificial user agent as 
prior versions, uh, actually that's a disk track, the distributing mechanism that's being used to install the wiper modules on the system. So please watch out for odd user agents that turns out to be a quite useful mechanism in order to detect a malicious software. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.